Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech Com video, we're going to be further discussing cloud computing on the Xbox One. Turn 10 Studios has reported that the Xbox One cloud offers 600% more AI capability than just the Xbox itself. And so what we're going to do is do a quick analysis of this stuff and we're just going to talk about and discuss what um, the team are saying and how they believe the cloud is actually impacting them. Now I just want to quickly give you guys a caveat. I have actually gone heavily into the pros and cons of a cloud as well as how cloud-based computing on the Xbox One which of course is using Microsoft's Azure services in various videos before. So if you want you can always search cloud on the channel and you'll come up with a plethora of different things. Um, I'm I'm not going to heavily go into a lot of that stuff because it has been spoken about quite um, in depth before so if you're curious about it you can check out those videos however no doubt we will touch upon it somewhat during this video uh, just naturally anyway I'm gonna give you guys a few quotes first and then we're gonna really analyze what this chap is saying now to begin with the two uh, fellows in question who were uh, uh, Turn 10 Studios manager, his name is Alan Hartman, and the creative director, Dan Greenwalt, yesterday were clearing up a few other bits and pieces. The first and probably the most important is that Microsoft himself never actually ordered them to make use of a particular platform feature. And this does, as well, of course, include um, cloud computing. In fact, all it did is basically encourage them and ask them to feature various um, facilities that the console allowed. However, the studio themselves, because obviously they work so closely with Microsoft and so on, they actually be believed that it was almost a sense of responsibility and duty for them to start testing out just what the Xbox One can do. Now... Obviously, many people are somewhat skepti skeptical about cloud computing, and there are some definite downsides to cloud, as, we have, as I've already discussed in numerous videos, such as latency. However, it does lend itself really well to certain applications, there is no disputing that. Now I'm going to read you guys out a few choice quotes. This is from OXM. Um, anyway... We've kept the quality up and we've improved the quality year over years of that quantity. And we've kept the cadence, I'm sorry, cadence, because if you can't deliver when the platform needs you, then it doesn't matter. We have to be there when they need to sh us to showcase the platform. He also said uh, the Forza is a massive game, a quality game, an innovative game, a launch of the console. It's a crazy hard it's the hardest thing we've ever done, but it's exciting. We're having fun, but it's a huge challenge. Now, out of quote for a moment, this is a very big point. One of the things that these first-party studios are doing, and you can also argue exactly the same thing for Sony with, say, Greta Games and um, the studios working on Infamous and uh, various other titles, of course, those studios are basically the ones who are breaking new ground, though it's almost down to them to say, okay, well, we know best what the hardware can do, and indeed, for example, Gorilla have actually, of course, done a lot of analysis of its own stuff and have actually made that publicly available, particularly to developers. I mean, I'm sure there's actually stuff that we've not got access to, and by we, I mean, of course, either the press or the public. I'm talking about quite a lot of stuff that I'm sure is developer eyes only. And one of the purposes of that is that they can somewhat lead the charge into the next generation. It's almost to inspire and to test out stuff as well. Because let's say that they find a particular technique doesn't work well, or conversely it works extremely well, then they are able to show that off and showcase that so that other developers can say, oh okay, that looks a really cool feature, or oh okay, I know to either avoid that pitfall or to include this particular piece of programming. Now I'm sure many of you are aware that one of the benefits of the new Forza is that it basically will pretty much learn from the player's styles. So in short, that you will be able to race against almost facsimiles of your friends. Uh, this 
but inferior at least it does massively improve the ability for the AI to learn and for you to get much better competitive challenge and that's good because one of the issues with AI as I'm sure many of you are aware I mean I'm not particularly a huge racing fan but one of the issues I have noticed on certain titles pretty much all titles is that AI either sucks or that it's really good and a lot of the time it will pretty much take the best racing line possible and all they simply do of course is that a lot of the time they'll just artificially slow down the cards so that they're not driving quite as fast or whatever so of course now is to actually make the drivers act more naturally and everyone makes mistakes and that's part of the AI as well is not just to emulate perfect human behavior but to actually emulate it in such a way that there will be natural mistakes in the drivers and as such one of the problems with that is it's a lot of computational power and as such Greenwald described this as basically taking a lot of power and would be a tremendous opportunity to actually offload this stuff to the servers he said and I quote when you've got a learning neural network more computing power is nothing but helpful because what you're able to do is process a lot more information and you don't have to do it on the real time on the box that frees up more of the box to do graphics or audio or other computational tasks so we can make our ai instead of just being 20 or 10 percent of the box's capacity we can make it 600 percent of the box's capacity Put it on the cloud and free up that 10 or 20% to make the graphics better on a box that's already pow more powerful than what we worked on before. Now, out of quote for a moment, and let's actually discuss this for just a second. This is a really important point because oftentimes latency um, on, say, the cloud is a huge issue. But in stuff like AI, it's not so much of a big thing. Because obviously, well, many people have argued that it's still going to be issues on certain first-person shooters and stuff like that. But in a driving game, it actually lends itself extremely well because oftentimes you don't need split-second reactions. Now, of course, there are going to be issues if you don't have, say, an internet connection. No doubt, then obviously it won't be able to take advantage of that. Now, in terms of the AI itself, it's a really good point. One of the really big emerging things, and I've spoken about this really heavily in the past, but I really want to do some analysis actually on this in the future as well. Um, GPU compute tasks and everything else really open up, well, a lot of avenues. One of those is AI improvements. Now, learning from human behavior is actually not really um, new. I've actually seen it on even, say, Virtual Fighter 2 on the Sega Saturn. There was actually a mode on that where you could actually pretty much go in, fight against your favorite characters, and they would try to emulate you the best they could. Now, of course, in reality, and I was actually reasonable at Virtual Fighter 2 when I was younger. I mean, I was certainly, you know, no world champion, but I knew my stuff. I'm pretty damn awful now but what I noticed is that it would continuously make the same mistake over and over and over and over again and I would try to train it by punishing that mistake so it would do X I would punish with Y rinse rinse wash and repeat and I try to deliberately put myself purposefully in a situation where I was in that same position where the computer was. So in other words, I would be trying to deliberately make the same mistake as the computer so then I could try and counteract it so that it could read and, well, in my mind, okay, let's see if it could actually understand where it's going wrong. However, the problem was, well, numerous. First of all, it was on the Saturn. And that's not besmirching the Saturn. It was a really powerful machine, actually. It was um, had dual-core processor. It had two processors in it. and actually had two graphics systems as well in it. But the reality of the matter is it still had limitations. Secondly, programming. Um, 
There was other issues as well, of course, but primarily this. There was other issues such as storing all of this data um, in a very finite amount of space. I mean, the Saturn had, I can't remember what the space was now, 512 KB, I think, or something like that, of storage. I honestly don't remember. That's complete, just pulling that on my butt. It probably was a bit more than that. Regardless, it certainly wasn't very much at all. And all of this, of course, took a lot of space, um, is basically what's coming down to. And... So you couldn't really have a situation where human behavior could be anywhere near perfectly mimicked. That's not to say that it wasn't better than regular AI. In fact, I actually went back to it at numerous years later and I actually got my butt thoroughly kicked. I actually did okay in arcade mode even on the hardest setting. But when I actually took on my uh, AI version of the characters that I played as... I got thoroughly owned, I will be honest, and that's just because obviously it did learn some tricks, it used a couple of combos, but ultimately it couldn't do certain things. So that and physics are going to be really big things. Now, we do know that of course, as I've spoken about very heavily previously, the cloud is going to have some issues with certain things, certain things that require instant calculation. So in other words, to put it another way, something that you press a button and it must happen instantly. So almost like a sync every frame type of thing, which is one of the reasons that I'm not really sure how physics and so on are going to be handled exactly on the cloud. Obviously, maybe it can do some anticipation there, but regardless... However, the very fact of the matter is, just being able to offload any of the computational tasks from the Xbox to the cloud will no doubt be a huge benefit. And you may not think that 20% is a lot, but when you think about it, 20% can be a hell of a lot, especially when you consider that the Xbox One's GPU is already at a deficit compared to its rival, the PS4. Now, we do know, of course, that the PlayStation 4 does have some additional tweaks let's go with on the actual apu which of course is the the jaguar unit now so that means of course it not only has an extra set of gcn units 12 compared to 18 that it also has some stuff to help with the computational power as well so just how developers are able to utilize the cloud how developers are actually able to enforce and squeeze out the use of the cloud is going to be a really big thing because it's going to free up GPU resources quite heavily actually in my personal opinion and so titles like Forza are definitely going to be very very interesting in terms of immersion. I also think that other titles such as as I've mentioned before titles such as Grand Theft Auto could also lend themselves extremely well particularly with items that are quite far in the distance and general AI of say the to pedestrians and so on. However, all of that said, um, there are a few issues I have with this outside of the technology type of thing. I've always said that one of the benefits for me of racing against friends isn't actually their skill level. Um, actually, I don't really care most of the time of whether the person's better than me or worse than me in terms of skill. Um, I actually just care about playing with that person. And so I suppose this is almost like a substitute. You know, if Jib isn't online, if, you know, if Trevor isn't online or, you know, Diane or I don't know honestly why I've chosen those names, but whatever. If they aren't online, then your only option, of course, would be to take them on. Uh, well, at least an AI version of them. And I suppose the other benefit is if you are playing single player, the other upside is that at least you're not dealing with AI that's basically as dumb as a post, which is absolutely bloody awful. One of the things that I absolutely hated about racing games, uh, as I said, I'm not exactly a huge racing game fan, but one of the things I'd actually hate is that AI would quite literally just crash right into you a lot of the time, especially on the earlier titles. They would literally just ram into you, and it's not because they're bastards, um, you know, and they have it in for you, despite what people may claim. Reality is that most of the time they were just setting a, well, following a set racing line. So, in other words, if the AI told them at that particular point, if the, you know, programming told them at that particular point to go down a straight at, 
I don't know, 80 kilometers an hour and then decelerate to 45 on a particular bend and then follow that particular path around, then they will try to do that. And obviously they've got some collision detection in there, but oftentimes it wasn't really what you need. And so AI is going to be a really big thing. And in my personal opinion anyway, I think AI and physics and particle effects and various other fluid dynamics and a lot more besides are a real big part of games. I've mentioned before that AI doesn't sell on the back of a box, right? If someone says smart AI, a lot of the time you say, yeah, 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 whatever. But you're going to immediately notice super high resolution graphics. You're immediately going to notice much better shadows. You're immediately going to notice much better lighting and various other aspects that go into a scene. And so for now, because consoles, I'm talking about the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, it's not really there for PC because PC has the so much more computational power anyway. But of course, we are limited by the current generation of consoles. They simply don't have the, well, the ability to process all of that extra stuff. Um, but of course, things are going to be changing over the next few years. So anyway, this isn't particularly telling us anything new um, in this particular video, uh, in this particular interview. A lot of the stuff has been uh, spun before, but nevertheless, I think the fact that it's actually 600% is actually pretty damn impressive, if I do say so myself. Anyway... We'll have to just see how much of a difference in reality this stuff makes. Um, because I think sometimes things are very... How can I put this? You can't really get a handle on just how much of a difference a thing makes. It's like that... It's an X factor. It's like when you actually get to touch it in reality, when you're actually using it in reality, then you can say, okay, this made a huge difference. It's, you know, it, it's... A tangible difference or we could say you know what I don't really notice this but I think in reality it's going to become quite a big thing and I'm sure we'll see a lot of developers using this for certain types of games as I said I do have a couple of worries with the cloud primarily the fact that I wonder just how many developers are going to develop games which are multi-platform which are going to use the cloud but we'll have to see, I suppose. Anyway, that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you found it somewhat entertaining. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.